Hi, I'm Sarah Tuck, the editor of Dish Magazine, and this is Claire Aldis, our food editor. Hi, and, everyone. Um, today, Claire is going to be showing me how to make glazed cardamom buns, and at the same time, we're going to be showing you together how to make them. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. What do we need yep. to do first? Right, we'll crack into them. Um, these buns, over the years, people always say to me, oh, what's your favourite thing, or what's your most requested item? And these cardamom buns have been in my repertoire 20, 25 years with lots of different alterations that you can add into them, which I'll talk about as we go along. So, Sarah, yes. you're going to put in three cups into your stand mixer, um, mm -hmm. three cups of high grade or strong flour, which is the flour that you use for most yeast cooking if you're going to make bread, anything like that. And we were just having the, the conversation about it before. That it's the kind of one that used to be used a lot in um, fruit cakes and things like that, Absolutely. Christmas cakes, but yep. Yep. not so much anymore, especially if you're an expert gluten-free Christmas cake maker like yes. you. Yeah, I've been making a lot of gluten-free um, Christmas cakes over the last few years. And I mean, the wonderful thing now about gluten-free cooking with things like that is it tastes just as delicious um, you know, as using um, regular flour. But uh, yeah, but strong flour like this is uh, or nearly always used for anything that um, has yeast in it. This is a spectacularly ham-fisted way of sticking the flour <laughs> into the measuring thing, but you know, there you we know. go, that's three yeah. cups of flour. Three cups of that, right, so a um, third of a cup of caster sugar. Right. Um, you could use brown sugar if you want, it'll, it'll um, still work just as well. It has a slightly different flavour in the dough, and uh, it's a much browner dough as well when you make it. Uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cardamom. Yeah, I'm just banging the door back in. Yeah. Okay, three quarter, yeah. uh, three quarters of a teaspoon. Three quarters of a teaspoon, yeah, which is one of those really beautiful aromatic spices, but one that you mustn't overdo. It's a bit like cloves, you know, if you get it, especially like a Christmas cake with too many cloves, too mm -hmm. much cloves in it, it's really medicinal. Mm. Saffron's the other thing as well, but used wise, it's delicious. Quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt, mm -hmm. and lower. And then um, we're going to use instant dried yeast. So I always buy it in these little sachets because I, I personally think that they stay a lot fresher than um, the screw top um, mm -hmm. jars like that. And you want, what am I looking for here? One and a half teaspoon One and a half of teaspoons. dry yeast. Now this sort of yeast is um, doesn't go into water first, so some yeast you have to bloom it yeah, in yeah. water. This doesn't, you just put it straight in and it's my absolute favourite. It's, um, it's, you know, keep it in the thing, but I do have to say, Check the expiry date. Yeah, for sure. If it says 2015 and we're 2020, it's probably not going to work. No, or if you like me, <laughs> with a pantry where there's things from you know, 2013 tucked away at the back. Exactly, yeah. at the back. Right, so we're going to put that on the mixer mm -hmm. and we're just going to um, mix those together. Right, and now you're going to whisk two eggs mm -hmm. into your one cup of warm milk. So. Just either heat it in the microwave or in a um, saucepan just until it's sort of like you put your finger in and it feels warm. And a teaspoon of good vanilla extract. Okay. We're just going to whisk those together. Nice. I'm just going to do a little yep. Yep. eyeball. I mean the other thing that you can add um, to the dough which makes it really beautiful and I love it is um, some finely grated orange zest. Mm, it's yeah, delicious. really nice yeah. and works really well with the cardamom and cinnamon and that sort of thing. And you could well. change those um, flavour profiles up too. Oh, you could you use some um, ground ginger. Yep, um, absolutely. And, and do you put nuts or anything like that in when you do the Not dough? in the dough, I don't, no, but, but dough. I do in the filling. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And the other, um, I really like um, whole aniseed. Mm, yeah. The tiny, tiny little grains and I toast them and sometimes I put them into the dough and that is delicious mm, as well. Beautiful. So turn your mixer on with the dry ingredients to bring them together and then then you add the milk, your beaten um, eggs and milk mm -hmm. slowly and then when it all starts coming together you can turn, turn it up a little bit and then what you're going to do is then add the softened butter and dollops right and when each dollop is really well um, combined then you add another bit and another bit. It's really important with the butter, it's not melted but it's very very soft Right. so to the point where like this is really important for that, mm -hmm. how sort of soft it is. It is. And then that will get beautifully. Some recipes tell you to melt it and put it in. I prefer it this way. That's what you can do, add it in, and then basically we're going to let the mixer run for five to eight minutes. Okay. Until it's all pulled away and we have this beautiful, soft, silky dough. Right, and so one little blob at a time until yeah, it's all Yeah, so a a sort of a blob like that. So okay. you're probably, you know, adding three or four. Right, three or four yeah. blobs. Turn the mixer off, lift it up and scrape it down with a rubber spatula so that all the butter is combined in the batter and not just greasing your bowl. 
Oh, so yeah. the filling, back to the butter, same sort of thing as we had for the dough, mm -hmm. it needs to be really soft but not melted, right? So I'll get you to pop that in that dish there mm -hmm. and then we're going to mix the other gorgeous ingredients in there which of course butter and sugar, mm, yeah, I've got a sticky bun bee without butter and sugar, mm, all good stuff. Right, and then you're going to mix in a third of a cup each of brown sugar and caster sugar. Alrighty. Which is, you can, if you want, use all one. A little bit mean on that one. You were, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it can work if you want to use all um, caster sugar or brown sugar. And then um, teaspoon, two teaspoons of cinnamon and one teaspoon of carbon. Right, crikey, that's quite a bit, isn't it? Yep. I suppose it all just disappears just into that disappears. amount of dough. Yep. Yeah, and one, and one teaspoon okay. of, of that. Yep. Right, and we are just going to mix all that together. Which really good. A spoon. So you can see if that butter was hard, mm, it would be impossible. Then it's impossible. And then when you go and try and spread it on the dough, the dough just rips and it just brings tears. Mm. And yeah. Oh my god, this smells so good. It smells like no, Christmas. It does, doesn't it? Mm. Nobody wants tears over baking. Good. So at this point, this is where you could also um, add other flavourings to it. So you could add um, orange or lemon zest, would be really nice. Mm -hmm. You could add dried fruit, So, um, but you do need to chop it. So um, apricots would be delicious, raisins, um, prunes, currants, figs, anything like that. Um, but yeah, but chop it finely so that when you smooth it all over your dough, um, you have lovely, um, even um, coverage of sugar all the way through and fruit rather than one person getting all the fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want it almost yeah. like a paste, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So that's what you're making. You're making a beautiful um, paste. Right. So you can do the old smoothie smoothie on the dough. Yes, we'll do the smoothie on the dough. Which we are now going to roll out and on a well-floured bench. I'll just get rid of these. And also, right, so. What kind of area do we need? Uh, generous to mm -hmm. start and quite generous with the flour because it is a really soft dough. Yeah. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to go in and start punching this dough down. You want to treat it really nicely and gently because it's got had that beautiful rise and it's not sort of like this rrr, 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 even though it might be tempting to do that. Right. So just tip that out onto onto your bench. This would be a great alternative to hot cross buns as well. Oh, I mean, not that, absolutely. You, not yeah. that you don't want to have, yeah. have hot cross absolutely. buns at Easter, but um, yep. if you were heading away for a long weekend or, oh. or at the moment hunkering yep. down for a long weekend yep. at home, um, it would be a great little project. Absolutely. It? Yeah, so keeping your hands mm -hmm. loud, just sort of initially I pat it out with my hands mm -hmm. well, into a rectangle. Right. So, as with anything, be it pastry or whatever, Always form it into the shape that you're going to roll it out in. So if you're going to make a long tart with pastry and you've made pastry, chill it in a rectangle or circle and that sort of thing. That's it. That's good sense. And then sense your sense. rolling pin, mm -hmm. well floured rolling pin, and we're going to run, um, you are going to roll it out to approximately. Let me just read my recipe. 40 by 25 centimeters. I, I have got. Right. You know I've got a ruler. Sarah has a ruler because I'm not much of a control freak. So. A ruler. <laughs> So Sarah's rule only goes to 30 <laughs> centimetres, so it'll be yeah, plus, this 10. plus 10 yeah. plus in there. And it's just approximate, right? Um, you don't have to get your ruler out. So I know you made this before yeah. myself. So what so, kind of so am I expecting? So looking at that to? now, you're mm -hmm. at 25, okay. right? So now you need to go. Now the other good thing to do is to every now and again, mm -hmm. get your offset spatula or whatever you've got underneath and lift the dough up and just put a little bit more flour under like that. And then... And now you want to keep rolling it out evenly. Right, to about 40 centimetres. I'll, I'll leave a little ruler there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I think it, it kind of shrunk, out, shrunk in a little bit. It then, does, just, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you just, honestly, it's really forgiving. You just need to go longer rather than wider. Right, okay, yeah, longer so, rather than wider. Yeah, yeah, because you want 40 long right. and 25 wide. Right, gotcha. And probably at the moment you're about 30 wide. And Shh, gosh, now. <laughs> just um, make sure that your sort of ends aren't sort of too narrow. And that you don't have a big fat bit in the middle because um, you just need to make sure when you're rolling out you're sort of rolling through the middle as well. So you get that. Gotcha. And that looks fantastic. Right. Now the only thing I would suggest mm -hmm. is that at this point we turn it around so you've got the long side Beautiful. in front of you like that. And we'll just try and pat this little corner. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Boring, boring. No, you <laughs> get in right. there. Yeah, just to try and bring that corner up. Otherwise the people on the get the end buns get a little minchy bun. And right, there we go. So that's it. Perfect. So now what you're going to do 
is use your spatula mm -hmm. and evenly spread. Oh, I'm going to leave that. this. That's so, right. so you can show me to <laughs> So, um, can you, oh, this one. So, what I tend to do, mm -hmm. rather than dollop the whole thing in the middle, because the gentler you can be with the with the dough, then the better it's going to come out at the end. So, just dollop like this, and then it just means that you've got less spreading to do. So, as you can see, by using an offset spatula. You can just get a really nice, even coverage of the sugar. I know this isn't the Weight Watcher special, but this mm. isn't a serving for one. I don't do Weight Watcher, <laughs> this is perfect to me. People are sitting there oh my god, look at all that sugar. This is a treat. You know, this is something that everybody loves. So just spread it evenly and then just go back over like this. And if you decided and you'd just done the sugar and, and butter and that and you hadn't put any fruit in at this point you go oh I'd really like some fruit you can as long as it's finely chopped yeah sure just put it over the top like that do a little mm. sprinkle of chocolate bits or anything like you that you could do a little oh. sprinkle of chocolate bits on it that would be delicious absolutely so there we go now you're going to roll it up so right. some people like to roll from away from them and some people like to roll. Oh my god, what do would you, have, you like do you to do? preference? Well, what would you like to do? I'm intrigued, I don't know now. What's natural? Because you have a sort of a natural rhythm oh, in the kitchen. Yeah. And mm. for some, recipes always tell you to roll away from you, but I always roll towards you. Yeah, me. I think I would do yeah. it too. Should we, we, should we we'll do a tandem roll? Yeah, you, absolutely. How squishy are so, we rolling? Yeah, no, just like that's perfect. And yeah. sorry, so as we okay. go, sorry, just, uh, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm, like I'm speed rolling. I'm just, yeah, so down. but do you want to um, just brush off. Mm -hmm. That extra flour that's under there because you don't want that flour in there. Yeah. You don't want to dilute the sugar. No, I don't. <laughs> right, pull that over like that and we'll just brush all that away. Mm -hmm. Pull all that away. But see, it's really, isn't it soft? It's oh my God, that yeah. is amazing. So then, yeah, so tap your ends. I have tap yeah. my ends. So see how we have a nice so if, so if you're a little bit fat in the middle, just sort of squeeze it to the end like that. Oh, that looks and perfect. Like that. Isn't that gorgeous? So here's the tins that we're going to use. So this is just a standard um, 12 hole muffin tin that we're going to use for that. Um, obviously you could make Texas muffin tin size ones. And do monster ones. But they're rich. I yeah, wouldn't yeah. do that. No. Right, so spray your tins with cooking spray or you could lightly butter them if you want to. And then just take um, pieces of grease proof paper, this is just brown baking paper, mm -hmm. and press them into the tins and sort of pleat them around the outside. I mean they're very rustic looking. And, but if you don't do this, then the sugar just burns on the bottom mm, and you no. don't want that. You want to be able to keep all that lovely buttery juice in there when they bake. Using a really sharp knife uh, makes a huge difference to um, getting nice sort of clean scrolls. But the dough is very soft and at this point you can actually just slide a tray under the, um, under the whole thing and pop it in the fridge for about half an hour just to let the dough firm, firm up because obviously the butter's soft and the dough's soft. It really depends on the time of year, like if you're doing this in winter, um, the dough will stay um, quite firm. But um, you just want 12 relatively even pieces. Well, people can just pick the size that they want at the end. But I mean, the whole thing about it being soft like this is the fact that it's going to be really delicious to eat. If, if the dough, if we'd added a lot more flour to it, then um, it wouldn't be that lovely tender crumb that we're looking for. And so it's sort of a little bit of a trade-off. But um, And the other thing is, if your knife starts getting really sticky with the butter and sugar, just wipe it with eight like this. Just give it a little wipe <laughs> with a paper towel and uh, and continue cutting like that. So I think we're reasonably even. I know, they look beautiful. They look really nice. Okay, I'm going to... I'm just going to slice, slice that little yeah. end bit. So take, take off that tiny little end bit from each of the ends and um, just so that you've got nice clean sides. And then what we're going to do, so pick them up and then what I do is I just pull that piece of dough around like that to make a really tight little bundle to drop in the paper like that. It's just easier. So just pick it up mm -hmm. and, and try then to sort of that. pull it around mm -hmm. like that. And then you can drop it in because what you want is you want them to be standing up right in the, in the um, tray because we want them to sort of they almost sort of get that little sort of top knot like that 25 minutes 180 fan bake <laughs> perfect 
perfect. <laughs> um, I, I cook nearly all the time with fan bake. Yeah. I know some people prefer non-fan bake. I just, especially baking, I just find you get a much more golden even cook with that sort of thing. Um, 25 minutes seems quite long for something like this, but we want them to be really well cooked in the middle. You don't want a stodgy mm, sticky no. bun in the middle. You mm. want the dough to be really um, well risen inside. And because they're quite dense, because we've folded them up, it needs. But keep an eye on them, like everything. Start checking at 20 minutes. Yeah. And uh, you know, and they should come up all beautifully puffed and risen. Ooh. Oh, yum! Right, and then now we're going to do the glaze. Mm -hmm. So what you got to do is heat up some apricot jam, so that it's nice and liquid like that. And then just dollop it all over. Yep, and just all and all the nooks and crannies and and that sort of thing. And it just gives them that lovely golden glow. Halfway through cooking, have a look at them. If your oven um, browns more on one side mm -hmm. than the other, then give them a fizz around. Or if they're getting really brown after 15 minutes, turn your oven down. To, right, you know. From 180, turn it down to um, 170. Nice. Don't think, oh, because she said 180, it has to stay at that. Right, so we've got the beautiful glaze on mm -hmm. them, which is my preference. I really love them like that. But if you don't want to glaze them, um, dusting of icing sugar when they're cool, mm -hmm. or obviously you could make up a little thin icing with um, icing sugar and lemon juice and just drizzle it over the top. But this is my preferred way of doing them. Yeah, well, they look amazing and they smell amazing. I know, too. Well, the smell is just oh, amazing, it, isn't it? Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Um, well, I hope you've enjoyed, as I have, learning from the master today how to make these incredible glazed cardamom buns. Um, don't forget to check out the recipe online and also in the latest issue of Dish. Uh, and we're going to leave it there because I can't wait now. We need to eat <laughs> one of these uh, straight away. I'll, I'll see you next Sarah. time. Yeah. <laughs>